Su Shui accidentally found out that she was actually a cannon fodder supporting actress from a rebirth era novel, a fake novel from a true and fake novel. Su Shui, the cannon fodder, is a fake heiress who was pampered and raised by a real heiress. She possesses all the characteristics of a second daughter, with fair skin, beautiful appearance, and long legs. Her ten fingers are not touched by the sun and spring water. After her biological parents passed away, she refused to go back to the countryside to take care of her three underage siblings and spent her days in the city competing with the real daughter Su Baozhu and being jealous. In the end, he was married to an old widower with four children. And the reborn true daughter Su Baozhu, relying on her true goodness, beauty, and coy physique, made great progress all the way and married a high dot quality young man who matched the same family in the courtyard. The couple had a hundred years of love Su Shui. What? I can take your cannon fodder female second life. She tore up the era literature of this laborer and quickly packed up her things to leave and return to the countryside. The villagers all believe that the lives of the four siblings of the Su family, who have no father or mother, must be very miserable. Who knew that their family was getting better and better? The second child, Su Xiaolong, ranked first in the annual exams, and the third child, Su Xiaohu, was recruited early by the military school. Even the youngest Su Bauer was designated as a royal actor by a certain major director. As for the boss Su Shui, he has long become a well-known tailor in ten miles and eight villages. The matchmaker who arranged for marriage stepped on the threshold of the Su family. I saw the terrifying local thug and laborer from ten miles and eight villages, carrying a three-hundred-pound pig, standing at the entrance of the Su family. The facial epithelium with scars smiles but does not smile. Who dares to think of my little moon? This pig's fate is his fate. Keywords of the novel Era spoiled, delicate and soft beauty favored by the rough man without pop-ups, era spoiled, delicate and soft beauty favored by the rough man without pop-ups, complete collection download of txt, era spoiled, delicate and soft beauty favored by the rough man latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Is she the female supporting actress of Chronicles Canon Ash? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1. Is she the female supporting actress of Chronicles Canon Ash? In the summer of 1978, Rongcheng. At the moment when Su Shui knocked her head against the corner of the table, she was so scared that she tightly closed her eyes. That's it, she was inexplicably killed by someone named Su Baozhu who claimed to be the true daughter of the Su family, Bang. With a loud noise, Su Shui's head hit the corner of the table, and her eyes darkened and she fainted. Little Snow, Little Snow Her mother Zhao Meifen's voice gradually drifted away in her ear, and Su Shui felt her soul leave her body, slowly drifting upwards. Suddenly, she arrived at a strange place, and a voice told her that she was actually a cannon fodder supporting actress from a reborn era novel. Su Shui. Hundreds of thousands of words of historical texts were flipped through before her, recording the brilliant life of the reborn female protagonist, Su Baozhu. Su Baozhu was deceived by a scumbag in her previous life and died tragically in the nightclub. It was only then that she found out that she was not the daughter of Su Jianhua, a tractor driver in Hongqi village, Hongqi town. She was the daughter of Su Qingbai at the Rongqing Science Academy. She was supposed to have no worries about food and clothing, but when she was born, she was held in the wrong position and switched positions with the real rural girl Su Shui. Su Shui, as the name suggests, has fair and beautiful skin. Although she is nurtured by the Su family in the palm of her hand, she is a completely superficial and superficial person. Su Shue, the grass bag, looked confused. Does she have such a grass bag? The text is still ongoing. After Su Baozhu's rebirth, the first thing she did was come to her home to recognize her family. Su Shue couldn't accept this reality and threatened Su Qingbai and his wife with suicide to drive Su Baozhu out Su Shue, who was pushed down by Su Baozhu and bumped into the corner of the table, said. 
It is almost certain that this article was written blindly with the purpose of beautifying Su Baozhu, otherwise it would not have been possible to say that she was a rascal and threatened her parents with suicide. No, now it should be called foster parents. Since Su Baozhu rushed into the house, has she always been very confused. Also, she is the one who was pushed down and bumped into the corner of the table by Su Baozhu, and is still unaware of everything. The book is still flipping back. The reborn female lead Su Baozhu not only knows about the future, but is also possessed by Koi. After getting married, Su Qingbai and his wife had a smooth sailing in their work. Su Baozhu married a young and talented person from the same family in the courtyard, and with her superb culinary skills, she reached the pinnacle of her life. However, canon fodder Su Shui became more and more of a masterpiece, which quickly disappointed Su Qingbai and his wife. Her parents, foster parents, even said things that were not really biological and thoughtless. And her elder brother in the army was also disappointed with her. After another argument with Su Baozhu, she was accused by Zhao Meifan of not being sensible and left home. Unfortunately, she was hit and disabled by a car, and when she encountered a passing homeless man, she picked up her home and became a mother. In law, when Su Baozhu and her scientist husband stood at the top of the pyramid, the once beautiful Su Shui was sold ten times because of her work, and the last time was to an old widower with four children who was lame, had an arm and a blind eye, and was full of teeth when she spoke. I'm sorry. Su Shui spat fiercely. What is this book called Nian Daiwen? Did Su Shui pout on the author's grave or kill the author's mother? How could she be written so miserably? Malicious, too vicious. Su Shui was so angry in a strange place that she was jumping around. She wished she could get out of here right away and stuff this historical novel with Su Baozhu as the protagonist into Su Baozhu's mouth. At this moment, the ethereal and ethereal sound suddenly echoed from above. Su Shui, have you seen your destiny in this life clearly? This is the result of the dove occupying the magpie's nest and the sparrow forcibly transforming into a phoenix. What the hell is that? Su Shui's cherry red lips parted slightly, and her pure white teeth faintly appeared. Who are you? Are you the monster who helped Su Baozhu? The bad guy wrote so badly about me. Did I dig your ancestral tomb? Being silenced by the choking system, it took a while for it to continue speaking. Now that you have an opportunity to change your tragic fate, should you cherish it? An opportunity to change one's destiny. Su Shui felt that the way she spoke was very strange and unreasonable. Even if she didn't change, she was confident that she wouldn't live as tragically as in this outdated literature. Su Baozhu is the daughter of fate, and she is far away from her. It's impossible for her to be sold ten times and end up with an old widower, right? Su Shui let out a proud snort. The system was afraid that she wouldn't agree and it wouldn't be able to complete the task. It quickly spoke up, you have a chance to change your destiny, which is to return to your original position, return to the Red Flag Village team, and return to the identity of the eldest daughter of the late tractor driver Su Jianhua. Your main task is to change the fate of your younger brother Su Xiaolong, who will die early in the future, your younger brother Su Xiaohu, who will become the infamous killer maniac, and your younger sister Su Bauer, who is the leader of the world's top fraud group. As long as you pull them onto the right path, the system will help you break free from your original fate. This monster called the system sounds great, but Su Shui is not the kind of person who would fall for it. Since I am not my father, no, my adoptive father's daughter, then I will naturally leave a place that does not belong to me. Don't try to say anything to confuse me, I don't believe you. As Su Shui's words fell, she reached out and tugged at the floating era novel, tearing it into pieces with a clatter. She makes her own decisions in her life, even if it's just in books, she won't let anyone make her fate. The historical text in front of Su Shui was torn apart, and her eyes suddenly lit up. She was still in the living room at home, with blood dripping out of her head. Zhao Meifan was helpless on the side, and Su Baozhu also stood on the side. 
Su Shui thought of that outdated novel and couldn't help but tug at her painful head. Without saying a word, she hit Su Baozhu's knee hard. This kick was very skillful, hitting the most vulnerable part of Su Baozhu's knee bone. Although it couldn't break her knee bone, it could kick Su Baozhu to kneel on the ground. I'll beat you to death, you bastard who lies and slanders me. Su Shui thought that the era literature she saw must have been deliberately created by Su Baozhu to slander her. Her little temper must be unbearable. In addition, her head was also injured by Su Baozhu, and how could she tolerate the damage to both her body and mind? Su Shui, a skilled fighter in the courtyard, dragged her injured head and firmly adhered to the principle of not getting into the line of fire with minor injuries. She grabbed Su Baozhu's hair and started a fierce fight, making her scream. As Su Baozhu was almost beaten up, Su Shui closed her eyes and fell onto the sofa in the moment Su Baozhu raised her hand. Zhao Meifen, who originally wanted to persuade Su Shui to stop, said. Xiao Shui. Xiao Shui. How are you? Don't scare mom. The sound of Zhao Meifen constantly calling rang in her ears, and Su Shui closed her eyes tightly, pretending to be dizzy. Humph, Su Baozhu, that malicious woman, dares to trouble her, so she won't make her feel good either. She wants to see what Su Baozhu will do after she faints. Isn't Su Baozhu the best at pretending innocent and pitiful in the book? Is she the founder of this industry? Zhao Meifen called out to Su Shui a few times but didn't receive a response. She turned her head to look at Su Baozhu, who had been beaten up and bruised, and said, What's wrong with you, Baozhu? You injured your sister's head, but now you've knocked her unconscious. Can't you tolerate her like this? Anyway, she was raised by her mother's hard work. Even if she has no blood relationship with our family, you can't treat her like this. What Zhao Meifen said later, Su Shui didn't hear because she closed her eyes and fell asleep here we go, the new article is here. Little cuties, move your cute fingers quickly and leave a positive review, collection, and review. Wow! End of this chapter Chapter 2 Intentionally holding the wrong picture what? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Intentionally holding the wrong picture what? When she woke up again, she was in the hospital. The pure white sheets and thick disinfectant pricked her nose very uncomfortable. Zhao Meifen sat by the hospital bed weeping, muttering to herself as if speaking to her. Xiao Xue, your sister didn't mean to hit you either. She was just a little angry that the couple deliberately held you wrong and accidentally pushed you down. Su Xue blinked, it seemed that when she was asleep, Su Bao Zhu had given her mother a lot of eye drops, right? Now it should be said that her foster mother had applied eye drops. Also, are her biological parents so miserable? Intentionally holding someone else's daughter to take care of, what is the intention? She made a soft noise, and Zhao Meifen immediately lifted her head, wiped away her tears, and smiled. Xiao Xue, you're awake. Su Xue is delicate in appearance, both her facial features and skin are as delicate as freshly made tofu, which can be easily squeezed to release water. At this moment, she was wrapped in white gauze on her forehead, and a few strands of her long hair were hanging by her ears and draped over her arms. White and black intertwined, beautiful and breathtaking. Zhao Meifen felt a bit regretful. How could such a beautiful girl not be her own? At this very moment, Su Baozhu pushed open the door of the ward and entered. Su Shui frowned uncontrollably when she saw the person in front of her, with a tiger back and a bare waist, dark skin and a face full of acne. Did her biological parents, Tu Su Baozhu, look ugly and have black skin? Su Baozhu's blackness is not sun-tanned, it is innate blackness. Also, from the name her parents gave her, it's impossible for her to be the kind of parent who would abuse her daughter. So in summary, Su Shui concluded that Su Baozhu was lying again. This liar. Su Baozhu walked into the door and found Su Shui looking at her. This Su Shui is like Su Shui in my memory, delicate like a fox spirit. 
As long as she acts coquettishly, there are plenty of high dot quality men kneeling down to lick her toes. In her previous life, Su Shue became a well dot known movie star and married the mysterious richest man with her beautiful appearance and deceptive methods. She could only marry a widower with a lame leg and four children. Why? Did she just occupy her own position and grow up pampered from a young age? Su Bao Zhu was extremely resentful. She didn't expect that heaven would give her a chance to be reborn. This time, she must step on Su Shue, a fox spirit, to the bottom of the mud. Because she thought of the events of her previous life, Su Bao Zhu had a strong hatred in her eyes. The hatred left Su Shue confused for a moment. She tugged at the blanket and shrank back, showing a very guarded expression. What else do you want to do? Su Shue is very delicate, even when she is angry, she looks like a delicate flower that breaks easily, making people feel very distressed. Zhao Meifen instinctively turned her head to scold Su Bao Zhu. Su Bao Zhu took the initiative, lowered her head and stared at the tip of her shoe, saying in an extremely sad tone, I'm sorry, Xiao Shue. I've never seen such beautiful clothes on you before, so I was momentarily distracted. I'm sorry. Su Shue was wearing a semi-old beige braji, which was the fabric her second brother, foster parents, had saved up for a few months when he first went to the military and bought her. She sewed it herself using her grandmother's sewing machine according to the pictures in the poster. Beautiful is definitely beautiful, but Su Bao Zhu said she has never seen it before. Who believes it? In historical texts, Su Bao Zhu was reborn from later generations. She only says this for one reason, which is to pretend to be pitiful and want to make Zhao Meifen feel sorry. Sure enough, as soon as Su Bao Zhu said these words, Zhao Meifen felt extremely heartbroken. It's the meat that fell off her body, and Su Bao Zhu looks very similar to her own uncle and others. Zhao Meifen's love for her has been further enhanced. Bao Zhu, you child, your younger sister's clothes were made by your second brother who pulled the cloth for her. If you like it, mom will also ask your second brother to pull the cloth for you and let Xiao Shue make it for you. Su Bao Zhu's goal has been achieved. She lifted her head and looked at Zhao Meifen with a shy expression that didn't suit her. Is that okay? Ah. Auntie. What's your name, Auntie? Bao Zhu, you're poking your mother's heart. Zhao Meifen stood up, her attention all drawn to Su Bao Zhu's poor acting skills. Wiping away tears and holding Su Bao Zhu, the mother and daughter had a deep affection and cried a lot. Su Shue had a headache and didn't want to see them in the ward showing deep affection between mother and daughter. She whispered, Mom, yellow is picky. A person as black and strong as her, how ugly would it be to wear yellow? Isn't it said in the post-apocalyptic article that she is very charming and proud? How can she stand up to Su Bao Zhu, a lying expert, if she doesn't firmly implement it? Zhao Meifen felt embarrassed upon hearing this. Su Bao Zhu, who originally wanted to act, couldn't help but point at Su Shue and shout at Zhao Meifen, this family has her or me, I, or she, you can choose for yourself. After speaking, he turned around and ran out. Zhao Meifen also quickly chased after her. Finally, it quieted down. After talking so much, it was a bit tiring. Su Shue picked up the hot water kettle on one side and wanted to pour herself a glass of water, but found that there was already no water in the kettle. She looked at the ward and found that there was only her own ward, and the rest of the beds had no hot water. Okay, go fetch hot water yourself. Fortunately, she hit her head instead of breaking her limbs, otherwise she would have died of thirst today. Su Shue walked out of the hospital room carrying a hot water kettle and headed towards the boiling water room. At the entrance of the hospital, two men, one tall and one short, one strong and one thin, are walking towards the hospital. The man walking ahead is about 1.8 meters tall and almost 1.9 meters tall. Wearing a pair of blue nylon pants, a pair of release shoes, and a gray shirt that had turned white after washing. The button under the buckle was open, 
revealing the bronze-colored skin. The slender neck had a high and protruding Adam's apple. The shirt sleeves were casually rolled up twice, revealing strong and muscular arm muscles. His short cut further accentuated his deep and sharp features, with a scar on the upper part of his neck near his ears, adding a layer of ferocity to his previously less mischievous features. He stood up with his head pulled apart, revealing in every strand of his hair that he was not easy to mess with. Donga, what do you think we should do after finding Su Baozhu? Jiang He, who was following behind He Qing Dong, asked. He Qing Dong inserted his hands into his pockets, holding a piece of dog tail grass in his mouth. He sneered nonchalantly, if you owe money, you can use someone to offset it. Didn't you see her buttock so big that you could have a son? He Qing Dong took a dog tail grass and strode upstairs. He takes big steps, taking two steps at a time is just like a normal person taking one step. Jiang He rubbed his hair with a smile, which was about to match the chicken coop, and said with a smile, it's better for a mother dot in dot law to be overweight. Not only is it easier to have a son, but it's also comfortable to hold a warm blanket in winter. Shu. Are you not afraid that your small body will be crushed by her? He Qing Dong spoke without mercy. Su Bao Zhu, that woman is not a good thing. If you are really with her, I guarantee you will be eaten to the pulp by that mother Yiksha. Su Shui, who had prepared boiling water, walked right up to the door and heard words coming from outside. With the thought of Su Baozhu's appearance, she couldn't help but burst out laughing. Realizing that she was a bit impolite, Su Shui immediately raised her hand to cover her mouth. It's just late, the door of the boiling water room has already been kicked open. End of this chapter Chapter 3 This man's brain is not very good. You are listening at Novel Full Audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 4 Fake Qian Jin returns to the village. You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 4 Fake Qian Jin returns to the village. Although Zhao Meifen has always been kind to Su Shui, if she stays strong, the Su family will not drive her away. But she doesn't want to live under the same roof as Su Bao Zhu, a lying fairy. Even if she could squeeze Su Bao Zhu to death, it was unnecessary to see that she also had a diaphragm reaction. She still hasn't figured out whether that Lao Shitsi era writing is true, so she can only temporarily stay away from lying spirits. Zhao Meifen was certainly somewhat reluctant, but under the guidance of Su Shui and the choice between blood and non-blood, she ultimately chose the blood-related Su Baozhu. She relaxed her grip on this side, so Su Shui didn't delay. She immediately packed her things and prepared to take the afternoon bus to the countryside. Zhao Meifen wanted her to stay for an extra day, but Su Shui shook her head. I'll leave early. Sister Bao Zhu can also come back tonight to have a reunion dinner with mom and you guys. When Zhao Meifen heard this, Su Shui's heart began to shake. She wiped away her tears and released her grip on Su Shui's hand. Xiao Shui, you must be well when you go to the countryside. If someone bullies you, you must tell mom. Su Shui agreed with a nod, only carrying a box full of her daily necessities and clothes as she walked out the door. Of course, she also carried in her pocket the 200 yuan she had earned by secretly making clothes for people over the years. Zhao Meifen said she wanted to be taken to the station, but Su Shui shook her head and went by herself. Mom, go find Sister Bao Zhu. She's not familiar with this place and doesn't know where to go. What if she encounters any danger? Of course, Su Shui's words were nonsense. She knew that Su Bao Zhu was reborn, and that she must have memories of her rebirth. It's impossible for her to be unfamiliar. But Zhao Meifen didn't know, and as soon as she heard Su Shui's words, she became anxious again. Su Shui had never seen that anxious expression before. She felt a faint discomfort in her heart, but it quickly dissipated. It's normal for a mother to worry about her daughter. If she's really jealous, then she can't avoid the consequences of that book. 
Su Shui and Zhao Meifen separated and took the tram to the station, then bought a ticket to Hongqi Village. Hongqi Village is located below Hongqi Town, formerly known as Hongqi Brigade, but later renamed as a natural village and called Hongqi Village. Hongqi Village is also under the jurisdiction of Rongcheng, but when passing through the city, the shuttle bus takes two hours. Su Shui found the sign in Hongqi Town and saw the yellow bus parked, which was about to fall apart. She was somewhat puzzled whether the bus would fall apart at any time. She got into the car with a slightly wrinkled nose, and a foul odor mixed with various smells almost made her jump off the car without turning around. If it weren't for the distance from Hongqi Town, she would really want to walk there. She reached out to cover her mouth and nose, walked confidently to the last row by the window, sat down, opened the window, and stretched her head out before daring to breathe. I bought the tickets now, everyone who got on the train has bought the tickets, and the train is about to depart. In the carriage, the ticket seller with a cloth pocket and short hair knocked on a thin iron rod, shouting for someone to pay. Su Shui took out a dollar. As the ticket seller approached her, she whispered to Hongqi Town. Hongqi Town. Fifty cents. Su Shui handed over one yuan, and the ticket seller casually handed her two twenty-cent tickets and one one-one-cent ticket. Su Shui glanced at a two-cent piece of money, which was not only wrinkled but also had a black and unclear substance. Most importantly, the money emitted a foot odor. Su Shui. So, comrade, can you give me a different one? She pointed cautiously at the twenty-cent bill. The ticket seller lowered her eyelids and glanced at the money, which she had just received from an old lady who had hidden it under her feet and may have buried it a bit. But isn't it like this in rural areas? The ticket seller intended to get angry, but accidentally met Su Shui's small, fair face and clean eyes, and she swallowed the words on her lips. Accustomed to it. She angrily withdrew the two cents and took out a clean and tidy sheet from the pile of money, handing it to Su Shui. Su Shui held the brand new two cents and smiled at the ticket seller, thank you, comrade. After collecting the money, the bus stopped for a few more minutes before leaving. As Su Shui passed by the road in front of the station gate, her sharp eyes caught a glimpse of a figure on the side of the road. It was the mentally ill person she had met in the hospital, and she quickly covered her face with a cloth bag. On the road, Jiang he couldn't help but complain as he looked at the distant bus. Today was really unlucky. Not only did I not catch Su Baozhu, but I also missed the bus. He Qing Dong took out a cigarette from his pocket and threw it to Jiang He, he also lit a cigarette and took two puffs, exhaled a cigarette ring, and a mischievous smile was caught at the corner of his mouth. This is fate. What? The river is a bit confused. His older brother has been abnormal since he entered the hospital, always saying strange and terrifying things. Should he suggest Donga to take a look? He Qing Dong could see through what Jiang He was thinking at a glance. He took another puff of his cigarette ring and threw the remaining half pack of cigarettes to Jiang He. He lifted his chin and gestured to the guesthouse across from the station, go open a room on the other side, I'll come over later. Oh good. The river caught the smoke and suddenly felt something was wrong. Not Donga, where are you going? Find someone. He Qing Dong agreed and lifted his foot out of his pocket with one hand, walking in the direction of the hospital. The river is beyond my grasp. Who else is Donga looking for? Is it the girl I met in the hospital's water room? I can't figure it out, I can't guess the shuttle bus jolted and swayed for two hours, and finally arrived at Hongqi town when Su Shui was about to be shaken apart. Su Shui got off the bus in a daze, unable to distinguish between east, west, north, and south. She rested on the tree trunk for a while before finally recovering. She looked at the sky not too early and didn't dare to delay. She asked someone how to get to Hongqi village and hurriedly headed in that direction. On the way, I happened to encounter a tractor from Hongqi village pulling fertilizer. The tractor was driven by the eldest son of the village chief, Su Baogang. 
When he saw Su Shui alone, he asked her where she was going. My name is Su Shui, and I am the daughter of Su Jianhua's family in the first team of Hongqi village, Su Shui said with a shy smile, what? Are you the daughter of Uncle Jianhua's family who was held the wrong way? Su Bao Gang was taken aback. These days, Su Bao Zhu has been promoting the fact that she is not from the countryside in the village to everyone, and Su Bao Gang naturally has heard of it. Yesterday, Su Bao Zhu said that when he went to the city to find his biological parents, they were worried that Su Shui, who was being held in the wrong position, might give up her position. I didn't expect to see Su Shui today. Hurry up, are you coming back to the village? Su Bao Gang quickly made way for a seat for Su Shui. Su Shui didn't hesitate and sat up with her suitcase in hand. Su Bao Gang started the tractor again, driving forward while talking to Su Shui about the village customs. Through the conversation with Su Bao Gang, Su Shui learned about the general situation of Hongqi village. End of this chapter Chapter 5, Team 3 Needs to Take a Detour you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5, Team 3 Needs to Take a Detour Red Flag Village, formerly known as the Red Flag Brigade, now has four small teams under its jurisdiction. From the first team to the fourth team, each team has dozens of households. In this village, their surname Su is the largest surname, accounting for almost more than half of the population. Then go to Zhao, Jiang, Li, and He. However, they are all in the third and fourth teams, which are relatively far from the first and second teams. After Su Baogang finished speaking, he looked at Su Shui's bright white face, which looked like a doll in a New Year painting. He couldn't help but say, Sister, you just came back. Don't go to the third and fourth teams when you have nothing to do. Especially the third team, don't go. Su Shui, who was originally drowsy from being shaken by the tractor, was refreshed upon hearing Su Baogang's special reminder. What's wrong, Brother Baogang? Her seniority is the same as Su Baogang, and she belongs to the same clan, so it's not wrong to call her brother. In our village, although most people are kind, there are also those who are ruthless and generous. People like the He family in the third squad are people who cannot be provoked from ten miles or eight villages. So sharp. Before Su Shui could finish speaking the harmful words, she suddenly thought of the big man's self-introduction in the hospital's water room. Red Flag Village, third squad, surname He isn't it so coincidental? Hmm. What did you say, girl? Su Baogang asked. Su Shui shook her head and said, I remember, thank you Bao Gang. No matter what happens, she has already listed the third team as her forbidden zone. I absolutely won't go there without anything, and I have to take a detour even if I have something to do. The geographical location of Hongqi village is very good, with a winding river dividing the village into four parts. The four teams of Hongqi village are divided according to the division of this river. Su Shui looked up and saw that the first team was separated from the third team by a second team, with a straight dot line distance of about two kilometers. This is not bad. Sister, it's getting late today and you should go home first. Su Baogang stopped the tractor at the village entrance and called a little girl who was picking up pig grass on the roadside, asking her to take Su Shui to Su Bao's house. The little girl is very thin, with surprisingly large eyes. Upon hearing Su Baogang's words, she hesitated and was clearly unwilling. Su Shui handed her a candy and smiled at her with a curved eyebrow, What's your name, little sister? My name is Dahua. Nowadays, some families in the village do not attach much importance to girls, so for someone like Dahua, their parents can simply give them a name. Then please ask Dahua to take her sister to her sister's house, okay? Dahua nodded. Okay. Su Shui smiled a little. After walking with Dehua for a while, I stopped in my tracks. She reached out and pointed to a small courtyard by the bamboo forest in the distance, which was about to collapse and looked like only one room. That's Su Bauer's home, sister. You can go there by yourself. Dehua's face was filled with fear, 
and she didn't know what she was afraid of. Su Xue didn't ask, but she took out another candy from her pocket and stuffed it into the palm of Da Hua's hand. Thank you, Da Hua. Thank you for guiding my sister. After she finished speaking, she picked up the box and waved goodbye to Da Hua with a smile on her face. Sister. The sound of big flowers came from behind. Su Xue stopped and turned her head, what's wrong? De Hua shook her head and hesitated for a moment before saying, Su Xiaohu is very aggressive and hurts when he hits someone. Sister, if you are beaten, you must run away. The words fell and the big flowers flew away in a flash. It seems like someone is chasing her. Su Xue let out a sigh. Forget it. Let's go by ourselves. She turned around and continued walking towards the small dilapidated house. I just walked to the tree not far from the door, but haven't reached the door yet. I saw a little girl about four or five years old looking up and speaking in a milky voice to a boy about ten years old who still had a runny nose, third brother, you give the sugar to Bower Bower and become your daughter. In law. Do you know what a daughter. In law is? A daughter. In law is someone who can give birth to many children for you. Besides Sue Bower, there was another child with both hands wrapped around his arms, staring at the runny boy like a little calf. I'm only about eleven or twelve years old. After Sue Bauer finished speaking, he added fiercely, Hurry up, give all your candy to my sister. Otherwise, I'll let you taste the power of my fist. Is this the beginning? Is it so powerful? Cough cough. Sue Shue almost choked to death with her saliva, and her voice caught the attention of the three children. Su Bao and Su Xiaohu turned around together, and Su Dajuang, who had been stopped and dared not move, finally found the opportunity to run away faster than a rabbit with a quick swipe. Mom, Su Xiaohu and Su Bao are too scary. Give him ten courage in the future, and he won't dare to pee in the bamboo forest again. Otherwise, he will be arrested by Su Xiaohu and forced to marry Su Bauer as his wife. Although Su Bauer is good. Looking, his mother said that beautiful girls are all transformed by fox spirits, and he doesn't like fairies under the tree. Su Xue and Su Bauer, big and small, sneeze together. Su Xiaohu was like a cat with a painful foot being stepped on, protecting Su Bauer with one hand and walking out. Who are you? The eyes that stared at Su Xue were full of vigilance. The siblings were dressed quite ragged, and their clothes were even more ragged than the ones they had just worn, as well as the child who was stopped by Su Bauer. According to what she saw in the book called Nian Daiwen, Su Xue knew that her biological parents received subsidies after their accidental death. So their family shouldn't be living such a tight life, what's the problem with it? Su Xue rubbed the slightly itchy tip of her nose and planned to put it aside for now, to establish a good relationship with the two children. She walked over with a smile. My name is Su Xue, I am your biological sister. She was about to take Su Bao's hand when Su Xiaohu opened her hand and took Su Bao a few steps back into their yard. You bad woman, don't try to catch our baby to sell, I won't let you succeed. Through the wooden door that could easily collapse, Su Xiaohu's voice came from inside. Although Su Xue was confused, she also noticed something was wrong in Su Xiaohu's words. What are you saying? What are you trying to sell babies? You didn't listen to me, am I my sister? My dear sister. So what about my dear sister? That malicious woman Su Baozhu has been our sister for so many years, and in the end, she didn't just run away and run away. Su Xiaohu said indignantly. Su Xue let out a sound, it turned out to be Su Baozhu's pot. Xiaohu. Are you Xiaohu? Do you know that Su Baozhu and I were held in the wrong place? She ran away because this is not her home, and I came back because this is my home. So what? Su Xiaohu's stubborn voice was still coming, who can guarantee that you're not here to sell your baby. The people in your city are the worst, we don't believe you. Don't think we're fooled. This little brat, at least he can't do it. 
Su Shui exhausted her good temper and rolled up her sleeves to push the door. In the corner of her eye, she caught a glimpse of a boy not far away who was about the same size as Su Xiaohu, but with a slightly slimmer figure, staring at her. That face is almost the same as Su Xiaohu's. He had wet clothes on his body and was still holding a fish as wide as a palm in his arms. What are you doing back here? Su Xue sneered and stabbed her head again. She turned around and slammed the door. Su Xiaohu, let me say it one last time, can I open the door? New cubs, young children, seeking tickets, positive reviews, love. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Beating a brother before it's too late. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 6 Beating a brother before it's too late, if I don't drive, I won't drive. If you have the ability, you can beat me up. Su Xiaohu shouted fearlessly. Su Xiaolong also spoke coldly, You go, this is not where you should come. We don't welcome you at home. Cold words that didn't fit his age came out of his mouth. Su Xue smiled, her eyebrows and eyes curved into crescent-shaped shapes. She turned her face and spoke with her unique soft and sweet voice. You just asked me why I came back. So I can tell you now. I'll come back and beat someone up. After speaking, she turned around and kicked off the half door that was about to collapse without anyone behind her. Yes, it just kicked away. Su Xiaohu behind the door promptly pulled Su Bauer to the side, and they were stunned as they watched Su Shui kick half of the wooden door away. They couldn't believe that this was something a city woman could do. Su Bauer's apricot eyes were also wide open, with black grape-like eyes that showed admiration and envy for Su Shui. Looking at Su Bauer's face, which is almost the same as that of her childhood, Su Shui beckons to her, Dear, go to the side, my sister is going to beat people now. When my sister finishes beating my brother, I will bring sugar to her. Su Bauer blinked her sparkling eyes and sucked in the saliva that was about to fall from the corner of her mouth. Do you have any sugar? Have, sister not only has candy, but also beautiful clothes. Bauer, please stand on the side obediently and give them to us when sister is busy. Su Shui is patient with the delicate and tender little girl, who is only a few years old. But for thugs like Su Xiaohu, he he, she has enough strength to loosen his skin. Su Shui smiled and walked step by step toward Su Xiaohu. Su Bauer, who had received candy and beautiful clothes, left her second brother very ungrateful and ran into the house, poking out a round head to check the situation outside. Su Shui casually drew a small vine and waved it in the yard where firewood was being stacked. Pixiru stared at Su Xiaohu without a smile. Su Xiaohu was a bit panicked. He didn't expect Su Shui to really hit someone. When Su Baozhu was around before, she wouldn't dare to hit them no matter what, you wicked woman. How dare you hit me? Trying to slip away while speaking. Su Shue sneered and swung the vine in her hand with a snap. Why don't you dare? I'm your biological sister, and when your parents are gone, I'm your guardian. You have to be disciplined by me until you reach adulthood. Why don't I dare to hit you? She held the vine and walked toward Su Xiaohu. If you listen a bit, I am naturally a gentle, kind, and reasonable sister. If you don't listen, you still think I won't hit you. Su Shui. How dare you? Su Xiaohu drummed his eyes, like a trapped beast. I want to fight Su Shui to the death. There was already a fierce expression in his eyes that didn't belong to his age. If he didn't discipline him properly. Su Shui believed that the ending of Su Xiaohu, who was originally named in the Chronicles, was the ending of Su Xiaohu in front of him. Little Tiger. Su Xiaolong's voice rang out in time, and he stepped in from the door. Let her stay. The siblings, who were originally at odds with each other, never expected that Su Xiaolong would be the first to compromise. Su Xiaohu still hadn't expressed his grievances. Su Bauer, who had been observing the war situation, 
ran out of the room and grabbed Su Xue's hand. Sister, sister, big brother said he wanted you to stay. Will you leave like sister Bao Zhu? Perhaps due to blood ties, Su Bao easily developed a sense of closeness toward Su Xue. Su Xue smiled and rubbed Su Bao's hair. This is already my sister's home, she won't leave, she said before breaking these three little brats back, it's not right. Currently, they haven't officially embarked on a criminal path, so they can't be said to be broken back. So let's put it another way. She won't leave until she has raised the three little brats to adulthood. Sue Bauer couldn't help but cheer, great, Bao has a sister again. Su Xue entered the room with a smile on her face, holding a box in one hand and Su Bauer in the other, without any courtesy. Su Xiaohu was extremely surprised. How could she be so casual? Looking up at Su Xiaolong, trying to get the older brother to say a fair word. Su Xiaolong, without saying anything, walked to the edge of the wellhead and drew water to kill the fish. Su Xiaohu quickly ran to Su Xiaolong's side and said, Brother. Brother. Didn't you see that? That woman. That woman. Xiaohu, go get a bowl. Su Xiaolong interrupted Su Xiaohu's words. Su Xiaohu let out a sigh and reluctantly went to get a bowl. Su Xue blinked and smiled. She lowered her gaze and looked at Su Bauer, holding her hand as she walked into the room. Can Bauer tell her sister where the kitchen is? How about Bauer and her sister go prepare dinner together? Su Bauer currently has no plan to become the founder of an international fraud group. Today, stopping Su Dajuang is also her first day of internship. She is not proficient in her business and her personality is not crooked. So she's still a very well-behaved little girl. In addition, if the older brother doesn't even drive the older sister away, then the older sister must be a good sister. She smiled and nodded hard. Okay. The interior is even more dilapidated and rudimentary than what is seen outside. There are two rooms, one for sleeping and the other for eating and putting things away. They were all the same old, mud-covered walls with cracks that could easily fit Su Xue's fist. With psychological preparation, Su Xue took a cold breath, but didn't say anything. She changed into a new outfit and went to the kitchen with Su Bauer to cook. The kitchen was even more miserable, with half collapsed and the remaining half only three or four square meters. Su Xue was burning an earthen stove in the kitchen with only half left, and needed to be constantly vigilant whether the beams on the roof would fall off. She squatted in front of the stove and burned it for half a day without igniting the earthen stove. The person was choked to death by smoke. Su Xue coughed non-stop and called out to the outside, Little Tiger, come in and start a fire. Su Xiaohu originally wanted to say why he called him, but Su Xiaolong glared at him and reluctantly stood up, here we are. Entering the kitchen, Su Xiaohu burst into laughter as he saw Su Xue's face, which was smoked black and stained with flowers. Ha ha ha, big flower cat, big flower cat, ha ha ha, we have a big flower cat at home. Ha ha ha. Su Xue. Has been offended. She held the straw used to start the fire, and if it weren't for maintaining her less aggressive persona, she would have wanted to hit Su Xiaohu again. Little tiger, hurry up and start the fire. The sound of Su Xiaolong came from outside, and Su Xiaohu dared not laugh anymore. He wiped the tears from his eyes and started the fire for Su Xue. Although it was the same action, Su Xiaohu ignited the fire immediately, and Su Xue couldn't even light it. What's going on? She was not convinced and bent down to look into the stove. Coincidentally, there were sparks burning out inside, and she couldn't dodge. The sparks burned a large part of her drooping hair. Sister. Sister's hair is on fire. Sister. Su Bauer was extremely anxious. I'll help you extinguish the fire. Su Xiaohu cheered and shouted loudly. Just as Su Xue was about to say no, a big bucket of cold water poured down, and Su Xue was drenched from beginning to end with a refreshing chill. 
She looked at her soaked clothes, wiped her dripping face, and looked up at Su Xiaohu holding a water ladle. What else does she need to maintain a good sister's character when dealing with such a monkey child? Is it okay to play three meals a day without being too many? And of course, I hit my younger brother while he was still young, otherwise how can I beat him when he grows up? Su Xiaohu. She raised the thin vine in her hand and rushed forward. Sister hit him, sister hit him, Su Bauer cheered on the side, Su Bauer, you traitor. In the future, second brother will never carry you to catch crickets, nor will he dig a bird's nest for you to eat bird eggs. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 My family is too poor. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 my family is too poor upon hearing this, Su Shue dared to climb up the tree and dig out the bird's nest, my goodness. He doesn't think his good arms and legs are too comfortable, does he? Su Xiaohu, do you dare to climb up the tree and dig a bird's nest? If I don't beat you today, I won't be your own sister. She rolled up her sleeves and rushed toward Su Xiaohu with her dripping hair. Su Xiaohu let out a cry and ran around the small courtyard. The mother tiger hit someone, the mother tiger hit someone. If it can't be hit, it's a little bit rough. After chasing Su Xiaohu for a while, Su Xue couldn't catch up with this monkey child and even exhausted herself. She stood in the yard, panting heavily with her hands crossed over her waist, and her chest heaving violently. Su Xiaohu, if you're still a man, stop for me. Su Xiaohu turned around and chuckled, Brother said I'm not a man yet, but a boy, so I won't stop. If you have the ability, come and catch me. I. Su Shue wanted to continue raising her feet to chase, but her feet were like pouring lead. At the same time, her stomach was also growling with hunger. Okay, she didn't make it difficult for herself anymore. It's not too late for my sister to seek revenge for five years, so she can't believe that she can't deal with Su Xiaohu anymore. Throwing the vine in her hand aside, Su Xue walked into the room and changed into a dry outfit before coming out to take Su Bauer to the kitchen to cook. Because the family was really poor, Su Xue cooked a pot of rice with corn residue and wild vegetables for dinner, and made a pot of clear soup with the fish caught by Su Xiaolong. It was really clear soup without oil or even salt. In order to remove the fishy smell, Su Shue added a lot of ginger slices inside, but because there was no salt to freshen up, the taste was still very bland. After taking a small sip, Su Shue couldn't drink anymore, while the other three siblings enjoyed their food, especially Su Xiaohu, whose head was buried in a bowl with a big hole in it, making a popping sound. Su Shue. My family is so poor, it's really too poor. After dinner, Su Xue asked Su Xiaohu to wash the dishes. Su Xiaohu was originally unhappy, but Su Xue said, whoever doesn't work, don't eat the next meal. Since the passing of Su's parents in the past six months, Su Xiaohu has been starving and afraid. He said that not letting him eat can indeed control him well. No matter how unwilling he is, he can only carry a bowl to wash. Seeing Su Xiaohu washing dishes directly by the well, Su Xue couldn't help but curl her nose. Su Xiaohu, the bowl that just ate fish has a fishy smell. Brush it with some plant ash, she said Su Xiaohu raised his head to talk back, and Su Xue let out a sigh. The sound is not loud, the thread is very strong. Su Xiaohu could only reluctantly snort, it's really strange that the mother tiger in the city knows how to wash dishes with plant ash. After saying that, he honestly went to pick up plant ash to wash dishes. Su Xue was satisfied and took Su Bauer to take a shower and wash her hair. The little girl hasn't washed her hair for a long time, and her hair is almost tangled. Sleeping with her at night, Su Xue can't stand it. She washed Su Bauer's hair and body carefully, and changed the water in the big wooden basin three times before it became clear. When Su Bauer is clean, Su Shue goes to their sleeping room to find clothes for Su Bauer. Sister, I only have one set of clothes. Grandma said she can't take too many clothes for the loser. 
Sister, what is a loser? Sue Bauer, who was white, tender, and slightly pink, sweetly spoke up Sue Shua. She rummaged through the room and indeed couldn't find the little girl's clothes. Sue Shue had no choice but to open her own box and take out a vest she usually wears to sleep and put it on Sue Bauer. Fortunately, she is not overweight, so the clothes won't fall off when she puts them on Sue Bauer. Sue Bauer was placed on the bed, and Sue Shue leaned over to take a look at the large bunk inside. There was only one room with a crooked bunk made of wooden boards, and the four of them could only roll on this bunk. This condition is really worse than when Sue Shue lived in the countryside with her adoptive grandparents when she was a child. Sue Shue is definitely not used to it, and she also doesn't like it very much. But this is her own home, she has no choice. I rummaged through the room and found a worn dot out bedsheet. I pulled a rope and hung the two corners of the bedsheet on both sides of the room. The large shop has been separated into two spaces. Su Shue tidied up half of the beds inside, placed the tattered and blackened cotton wool under the middle bed sheet of the Datong bed, and then took out the floral bed sheet she brought for use in the city to lay it on, and brought Su Bao over. Baby, be good and go to bed first. Sister, go take a shower and wash clothes. Su Bauer is a beautiful embryo that can be seen even at a young age. She was washed clean again, and even more watery. Caught in bed by Su Shue, Su Bauer blinked and obediently agreed to say hello. Sister, will you stay at our house forever? She still asked a bit uncertain. Su Shue smiled and said, Yes, this is also my sister's home. Before Bauer and her brothers grow up, my sister will stay here forever. Bauer, go to bed and wake up tomorrow morning to take my sister to the village to play, okay? Okay, I want to let Er Go Mao Dan and his team know that I have a beautiful sister. Su Bauer is a little devil and knows how to show off at a young age. Su Shue chuckled lightly and patted Su Bauer's back. She turned around and left the room only when Su Bauer closed her eyes. Under the blanket, Su Bauer smelled the fragrant and soft blanket, thinking of Su Shue's gentle smile. She seemed to see her mother still around. Mom and Dad, did you see that Bauer and her brother were living too hard before sending our sister back to us? Can you not let our sister leave like Bao Zhu? The little person whispered softly under the bed and soon fell asleep. Su Shue went to take a shower and also washed and dried her and Su Bauer's clothes together, drying them on the ropes in the yard. She had originally planned to ask Su Xiaolong and Su Xiaohu to take a shower, but when she stepped into the room, she saw them rolling onto the big bunk. The shoes they kicked casually on the side still emitted a strong foot odor. Su Shue immediately pinched the tip of her nose. What are you doing? Going to bed before taking a shower. Su Xiaohu ignored Su Shue, but Su Xiaolong sat up awkwardly, I took a shower the other day. Washed just a day ago. Not right. Su Shue stopped talking and looked at Su Xiaolong suspiciously. You haven't taken a shower in three days. What about Su Xiaohu? Su Xiaohu sneered and said nonchalantly, Young master, the last time I took a shower was in winter. Su Shue's hand hanging on her side couldn't help but clench into a fist. Very good, they really have the urge to make her beat up ten times a day. Go take a shower now, it's clean. Come in for the meeting. Meeting, what meeting is it? Su Xiaohu lazily looked at her, looking very rogue. Mother. Before she could finish speaking, Su Shue had already bent down and threw Su Xiaohu's stinky shoes in Su Xiaohu's face. Su Xiaohu hurriedly caught the shoes and threw them off the bed. Su Xue, what are you doing? Don't you know it's dirty? Su Xue sneered, do you still know it's dirty? Su Xiaohu, you're even dirtier than your shoes. You don't have any self-awareness. I'll say it again, get out and take a shower right away. Coming, the new article is updated twice a day, tentatively scheduled for around noon. Don't forget the 5.star review, little ones you like. Bow and thank you, end of this chapter. 
Chapter 8 First Family Meeting Convening You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 First Family Meeting Convening Su Shui is really angry. Su Xiaolong took the lead in getting off the Datong store. Su Shui's gaze fell on Su Xiaohu. Su Xiaohu snorted twice and reluctantly followed Su Xiaolong down the big shop. As soon as the two little bunnies left, Su Xue's delicate facial features immediately wrinkled into a lump. She turned around and hurriedly ran into the yard, rubbing her hands several times with the remaining well water in the bucket. Until she felt the stench dissipate from her nose, she took a deep breath and turned back to walk. Why bother? Encountering Su Xiaolong, who was still dripping with water, he hugged his arms and watched Su Xue speak softly. Su Xue unexpectedly understood his meaning and sneered, want to understand the thoughts of adults. You can talk about it as an adult first. She walked past Su Xiaolong without stopping her steps. The first family meeting has one minute left, so whoever is late for tomorrow's breakfast doesn't need to eat it. She had already realized that not letting people eat was their weakness, so Su Xue didn't hesitate to grasp it. As soon as she finished speaking, Su Xiaolong walked in and Su Xiaohu, who had no idea where to go, rushed out. They both carried water droplets on their bodies, and their exposed faces were clean. I just don't know if my body has been washed or not. Su Xue is not in a hurry either. At least the foot odor is gone, and she can take her time with everything else. She sat to the side. Tell me, how did our family live like this? What's going on? Su Xiaohu felt uncomfortable all day without talking back to Su Xue. Su Xue gave him a faint glance. She didn't want another sweaty exercise after just taking a shower, so she let Su Xiaohu go for now. Xiaolong, you say? Su Xiaolong looked at Su Xue and lowered his head in silence. Su Xue knocked on the table with her hand and said, Su Xiaolong, you're not telling me anything. How can I survive in this village? Do you want me to be bullied to death like you and not even know how to resist? Who said we don't know how to resist anymore? I scared that old witch into a cesspit. Su Xiaohu jumped out immediately to confront Su Xue. Little tiger. Su Xiaolong glanced at his straightforward younger brother, feeling both helpless and guilty. Su Xue saw the reactions of the two brothers in her eyes, and she chuckled as she hugged her arm. Who is the old witch? Mom and dad's mother. What's your concern? Su Xiaohu couldn't help but retort. Su Xue's fingers wrapped around her arm and moved, Su Xiaohu, do you forget the taste of stir-fried pork with bamboo shoots if others don't hit the roof every day? She pretended to take action again, and Su Xiaohu strategically retreated. Su Xiaolong slowly spoke up. Half a year ago, after my parents had an accident, my grandmother took advantage of my older brother and younger brother to get married and not have a new house to live in. She asked us to give up the house. Wan Suihong's words at the time were that they would move to the old house for the time being, and when Su Qingjia and Su Li's two brothers got married, they could move back. At that time, they didn't even know that this was a lie from Wan Suihong, so they foolishly moved over. Later, both Su Cheng and Su Liye got married. Su Xiaolong went to ask Wan Suihong and her friends when they could move back, and they were scolded for their bloody behavior. At this moment, Su Xiaolong finally found out that their own grandmother, together with their uncle's family, had tricked their parents into building five large tiled houses, five large tiled houses. Is Su Baozhu foolish? Why doesn't she come back? No wonder Su Xue's words are unpleasant, it's just that they are. How could that bad woman possibly want the house back? She didn't get kicked out of her own place, what did she want? And if she thought about us so much, she wouldn't steal our money. When Su Xiaohu talked about this, he felt like a hedgehog with its head provoked and all its thorns spread open. Su Xue tugged at the corner of her mouth. She's a great liar, how dare she steal money. Wow, that era novel with a lying fairy as the protagonist is really disgusting. 
how could even someone like a lying fairy become the protagonist? She doesn't believe in the content of the chronology anymore. All right, I'll go figure it out. Su Shui thought for a moment and finally decided to solve Su Baoju's theft of money and the occupation of land and property on her own. She can retrieve the money stolen by Su Baoju later because she still has some money on her body, which can ensure that their siblings will not be hungry for the time being. As for the fields and properties, she will definitely come back as well. It's just that it's not easy to come knocking at night now, we'll have to wait until dawn. But right now, there is something very important for Su Shui that must be resolved immediately. This is related to whether their family will need to perform all martial arts every day in the future, which is a big deal. Su Shui coughed and spoke under the gaze of Su Xiaolong and the Su Xiaohu brothers, as the saying goes, without rules, there is no place. This country has laws, and our family has rules. We also need to establish rules. What rules? What rules? Two brothers, who were as thin as monkeys, looked at Su Shui together and were attracted by her novel statement. Su Shui naturally spoke out about the rules at home. Firstly, it is not allowed to climb trees or dig bird nests, and it is not allowed to fish in the river. Violators will be fined lightly for one day without eating, and severely for three days without eating. This concerns the lives of the two brothers, it's not a joke. So Su Shui put them at the forefront of all the rules. As soon as Su Xiaohu heard that he couldn't climb the tree and dig the bird's nest, he exploded. Why? You're targeting me, why should I listen to you? He he, why? Su Xuepi looked at Su Xiaohu with a smile on her face. Just because I am your biological sister, I am the only adult in the family and also your guardian. Before you came of age, I was the parent and I had the the final say. Su Xiaohu stopped working and wanted to bring Su Xiaolong over to speak for him. Su Xue didn't give him this opportunity. The second rule is that you all go to school for me. No one in our family is allowed to miss high school graduation. What? The third rule is that I the final say the little things in the family and discuss the big things together. Except life and death, everything else is small. Ah. What's the difference between this and you're the final say? Su Xiaohu shouted loudly. Su Xiaolong also tugged at the corner of his mouth. They didn't agree, but Su Xue didn't listen at all. The fourth rule is that if there are conflicts or opinions among family members, they must be resolved at home. They cannot go out and talk nonsense outside, they must be consistent with the outside world. Article 5 Su Xue glanced at Su Xiaohu, who was still dark and not much white, and coughed, saying, our family must love cleanliness and hygiene. We have to take a shower every day in summer, and we can do it again every other day in winter. If we don't wash our feet, we can't go to bed. This is targeting us, said Su Xiaohu and Su Xiaolong, congratulations, you answered correctly. But please don't forget the third rule. I am the master of small matters at home. Lastly, older sisters can unconditionally tidy up their younger brothers. Su Xiaolong, Su Xiaohu. They are naive. I thought my sister had returned, so she was a little better than Su Baoju. But I didn't expect that my older sister was the one who was truly miserable. Unfortunately, they cannot resist yet. How miserable. I'm here. I went out today and just came back. The update was a bit late, end of this chapter. Chapter 9 Elder Sister's Style You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 9 Elder Sister's Style After setting the rules, Su Shui turned around and took out a pen and paper from the box she had brought back. She wrote down what she had just said and pasted it on the opposite pillar of the big shop. This way, everyone can see it. All right. Go to bed and get up early tomorrow to get a house. Su Shui clapped her hands and got on the other side of the bed across the felt. She lay down next to Su Bauer, who was sleeping soundly, and closed her eyes. Across the street, 
Su Xiaohu was whispering to Su Xiaolong about Su Xue's atrocities. When Su Xue was in the city, she used to sleep on a wooden bed, but at least there was thick cotton padding underneath, and sleeping on it was soft and comfortable. Unlike now, where there is only a thin cloth underneath, there is dried straw under the cloth. As soon as I turned over, the straw creaked. After flipping through it twice, Su Xiaolong and the others still heard Su Xiaohu's murmuring. She sat up in anger and said, Su Xiaohu, can't you sleep? Then go and open up all the land in the yard for me. I need to plant vegetables when it rains. Su Xiaohu. Who wants to? Su Xiaolong tugged at Su Xiaohu's arm and interrupted his words, stop talking and go to sleep. Su Xiaohu still refuses to accept it, just like a hedgehog, he easily refuses to accept people. Moreover, before leaving, Su Baozhu brainwashed Su Xiaohu, saying that it was Su Xue, her own sister, who couldn't bear the hardships in the countryside, that she never came back. She had long known that she was the daughter of the Su Jianxi family. Su Baozhu also said that Su Xue will leave when she comes back. Once she finds her partner, she will get married and won't care about the sibling Su Xiaohu didn't expose the true face of Su Xue, a bad woman, when he saw Su Bao liking her so much today. Su Xue didn't know that Su Baozhu's lying spirit was still giving her eye drops in front of Su Xiaohu. She, who had become accustomed to sleeping alone, suddenly changed her environment and slept with a few cubs, making it difficult for her to fall asleep. But when she knew she would turn over and the straw under her body would chirp, she didn't turn over. She closed her eyes and counted in her mind, not knowing when she had finally fallen asleep. At the same time, He Qing Dong, who stayed at the city guesthouse, was having a beautiful dream. He dreamt of his little moon with autumn water in its eyes, lying soft under him. He imprisoned her in his arms, frantically seizing the unparalleled beauty, little moon. Little Moon. Jiang He, who was living in the same room and on another bed, was awakened by the sound from his brother's side. He opened his eyes in a daze and found that his brother was gnawing on the blanket, his buttocks arched up for something unknown. Dong Gu must be hungry, he didn't eat much for dinner. Jiang He rubbed his eyes and rolled over to continue sleeping. He Qing Dong also continues to have his beautiful dreams the next day, Su Xue woke up under Su Bao's soft moans. She opened her eyes and saw Su Bao sitting beside her smiling. Her heart was melted by Su Bao's smile, and her slightly sore shoulders seemed to have felt better after sleeping all night. Let me see whose little girl is so beautiful. It's the darling of my sister's family. Su Bao followed suit and answered with a smile. Su Xue let out a muffled sound, I see. She sat up and glanced at the motionless curtain next door. Bauer got up so early, what about my brother and the others? I didn't hear the voices of Su Xiaolong and Su Xiaohu. I wonder where they went. Don't go up the tree and dig a bird's nest while you're asleep, otherwise she will really beat someone up. Big brother and second brother went to pick firewood, while Bauer stayed at home with her sister. We Bauer are so good. Su Xue touched her furry head and got out of bed with a smile on her face. Take the comb and take the little girl outside the door, and tie two round little knots on both sides of her head. Su Xue looked at Su Bao's hair and thought of returning to the room. She cut a thumb-wide piece of cloth from each sleeve of her pink floral dress and tied it onto Su Bao's hair. The originally monotonous hair quickly became much more agile. Beautiful headband. Su Bauer tilted her head and touched the broken flower ribbon hanging from her hair, her eyes sparkling with love. Su Xue let out a sigh. Does Bauer like it? I like it. Su Bauer nodded heavily, but my sister doesn't have any beautiful clothes anymore. It's okay, my sister originally planned to change that dress for Bauer. When Su Xue was a child, she lived at her grandmother's house in the countryside for a long time because her foster parents were busy with work. Grandma happened to be a tailor, and Su Xue followed her every day. She was deeply influenced and fell in love with making clothes. 
Grandma Sue saw that she liked it and had intelligence, so she poured out all her skills and taught her it can be said that as long as you give Sue Shui a pair of scissors, a piece of cloth, and some needles and thread, she can make a beautiful dress for you. Her eyes were simply the most standard rulers, and just a quick glance would reveal the size of the other person. Thinking of the past, Su Shui felt a bit down, but fortunately her grandparents were no longer there. Otherwise, they would have been very sad to know that they were not their granddaughter, right? Sister. Su Bauer shook her hand and Su Shui immediately lifted her head with a smile on her face. Let's cook but Bao needs to help sister start a fire. Okay. A big and a small couple walked into the kitchen holding hands. Su Bao was better at making a fire than Su Shui, and soon the fire started. Su Shui scooped out more than half a bowl of corn flour with corn dregs from the rice vat in the house and poured it into the boiling iron pan. Pick up a large wooden spoon and wash it clean, stirring the corn in the pot. Soon, the aroma of corn floated out of the pot. It smells so good. Sue Bauer leaned on the stove and looked into the pot. Do we have such delicious corn rice for breakfast? Sue Bauer looked at Sue Shui with bright eyes and asked. Sue Shui remembered when she was as old as Sue Bauer. Although life was difficult, she could still have enough to eat. Hmm. She had just agreed when a heart-wrenching cry came from outside the yard, interrupting her words. Oh my goodness, there's no one who bullies people like this. The second couple, if you're alive, open your eyes and see what your good son has done to my dog's egg. Su Shui had a momentary illusion that the voice was coming from Aunt Lee downstairs in the family courtyard. However, Su Bauer tightly grasped Su Shui's hem in an instant, with a frightened expression on her face. She kept walking back, yes. It's a bad person, it's a bad person coming. Hmm. Su Shui bent down and picked up Su Bauer. Bauer, don't be afraid, sister is here. The bad guys are bad, beat Bauer. Su Bauer put his hands around Su Shui's neck, and his voice choked up. Su Shui patted her back and comforted Su Bauer with soft words. Outside the door, Li Tsuetsue had already cried and pushed open their wooden door, which was no different from a decoration. She dragged her son Gooden, who was covered in blood, into the room. Behind them, there were also many villagers watching the excitement. With more people cheering up, Li Tsuetsue's voice grew louder and louder. Su Shui walked out of the house holding Su Bauer. Seeing Li Tsuetsue with her hands on her hips and cursing in the yard, a faint smile curved her lips. Good guy. The people outside the yard, including Li Tsuetsue, were stunned by Su Shui's smile. This Miss Su from the Su family is so outstanding in appearance. Updated, see you tomorrow. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Making a fuss at the doorstep without reason. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 10 Making a fuss at the doorstep without reason the people who came to watch the excitement were really surprised. They thought that Su Shui was at most similar to Su Bao Zhu, black and chubby, but they didn't expect Su Shui to be so shiny and smooth. Isn't it true that people in the city live a good life? Why is there so little meat on her body? Was he abused in the city? Or is Su Shui just an unlucky person? Because everyone's life is not very good, it is now unanimously believed that those who eat fat are the lucky ones, and marrying them back home is also good for having a son and a prosperous family. Su Shui is obviously not the one from the Wang family, but her face is just too beautiful, which is enough to offset most of her shortcomings. For a moment, women with suitable sons and daughters at home were secretly thinking in their hearts, whether or not to invite someone to come and mediate. Now that the adults of the Su family are gone, only three dragging oil bottles are left behind. As long as Su Shui is someone with some brain, she should quickly marry herself out and escape this fire pit, right? Some ill-intentioned aunties are even fantasizing about how Su Shui will compete with this orphan girl without the support of her family after marrying into their family. Su Shui didn't know that in a short period of time, 
people outside could have such rich thoughts. She hugged Su Bauer and walked to a place not far from Li Tsue Tsue. She calmly glanced at the dog egg covered in blood and smiled, saying, I wonder if Aunt Li's coming early in the morning is okay. When she speaks, her tone is soft and comfortable to fall into her ears. Some single young men outside, not from the Su family, heard Su Shue's words and felt their hearts itch. If there were such a woman Li Tsue Tsue regained her composure and said, You are the daughter of Su Jian Shi who deliberately switched with someone else, right? Look at Su Xiaohu beating my dog's egg like this. What do you want to do? Is it compensation or I'll report it to the police, you can choose for yourself. Since her rebirth, Su Bao Zhu has been spreading rumors in the village, intentionally or unintentionally. She and Su Xue were deliberately replaced by Su Jianhua and the others. Although not many people believed in them, it is inevitable that there were good people, such as long-tongued women like Li Tsue Tsue, who used them as gossip after tea and dinner. At this moment, in order to suppress Su Xue, she was even more outspoken in saying this matter. She wanted to see what would happen to Su Xue, a petite city fake phoenix. Su Xue was not angry. I'm not in a hurry either. The smile on her face didn't even disappear. She listened to Li Tsue Tsue's words with a faint smile on her face, as if Li Tsue Tsue was belittling and mocking someone other than herself. Aunt Li, right. First of all, as Su Xiaohu's sister, I'm sorry that he hit someone outside. But there must be a cause and effect in everything, and I believe our little tiger won't hit someone for no reason. Please don't be too anxious, Aunt Li. I'll call little tiger back and ask him clearly before deciding what to do. Upon hearing this, Li Tsue Tsue asked Su Xue if she wanted to call Su Xiaohu back. In the past, if it were Su Bao Zhu, wouldn't it be just catching Su Xiaohu or cursing? Does she still need to ask the child's opinion as a newcomer? Li Tsue Tsue certainly refused. Don't make excuses anymore. I told you there are only two options, either compensate 100 yuan or report to the police. Su Xue frowned and just as she was about to speak, Su Xiaohu's angry roar came from outside the crowd, why do you want her to lose money? That dog egg was thrown by herself, not me at all. Su Xiaohu, carrying a bundle of firewood, squeezed in with Su Xiaolong from outside the crowd. Li Tsue Tsue. Her son, dog egg, beside her. Neither of them seemed to have expected that Su Xiaohu would come back at this time. Li Tsue Tsue was stunned for a moment before regaining her composure and speaking up, poking her waist and pointing at Su Xiaohu's nose, cursing, Su Xiaohu, you have been killed by a knife without any guidance from your mother. Are you saying that I have wronged you? As soon as she finished speaking, Su Xiaohu, who was still carrying firewood, threw the firewood on his shoulder with crimson eyes and turned to charge towards Li Tsue Tsue. His parents have died, and he hates it the most when people talk about it. Su Xiaohu. What do you want to do? Su Xue sternly stopped the rushing Su Xiaohu and put Su Bauer down a few steps to stop her in front of Su Xiaohu Su Xiaohu, who was stopped, stared at Su Xue with crimson eyes. At this moment, there was a raging anger in his eyes, and he pointed at Li Tsue Tsue and shouted loudly. Did you not hear her scolding me? Do you, a city resident, feel like you haven't been raised with my parents, so you can let people insult them at will? Su Xiaohu has read books, and Su Bao Zhu has brainwashed him before, so he has always had prejudice against Su Xue. At this moment, he is like a irrational little calf, trying to bump into someone as soon as he catches them. Su Xue asked Su Xiaolong to come and hold Su Xiaohu, and Su Bauer quickly ran over with short legs, holding Su Xiaohu's waist with both hands. Brother, you can't hit your sister. Bauer doesn't allow you to hit her. Su Xiaohu struggled hard, but dared not really shake off Su Bauer and Su Xiaolong with force. He could only stare at Su Xue with angry eyes, as if those eyes were about to cut Su Xue apart. Su Xue tugged at the corner of her mouth. Take him into the house. Su Xiaolong nodded and the siblings dragged the person into the house together. 
Li Tsui Tsui thought that Su Shui was going to apologize, and she raised her chin slightly with a haughty attitude. Let's compensate. For the sake of you just coming back, my aunt won't bother you too much. You can just compensate for 99 yuan. Is Li Tsui Tsui crazy about money? Otherwise, how could she feel that Su Shui is the kind of troublemaker who takes money out without saying anything? Not to mention that 99 yuan is just a few months or half a year's worth of food for rural people, even if Su Shui is the kind of person who is extremely wealthy, she will not casually take out 99 yuan. She's not a fool, thinking she can't see that Li Tsui Tsui's son has chicken blood on his head. Su Shui curved her lips and smiled, Aunt Li, is your dog egg your biological son? Li Tsui Tsui's face turned green at once. She begged her grandfather and grandmother to secretly take a lot of medicine to get her precious son. What does Su Shui, a fox spirit, mean by asking this question? What are you talking nonsense about? Of course, dog eggs are my own. Because she gave birth to a son, Li Tsui Tsui became very proud in front of her sister. In law at home. Su Shui nodded disapprovingly. I thought it wasn't your own. I didn't expect that your biological mother could also pour chicken blood on her son's head. Aunt Li, haven't you heard that chicken blood is used to expel dirt? Are you treating your son like a dirty thing? Aren't you afraid he'll fall out of his soul? Li Tsui Tsui instinctively exclaimed, who said that? She raised her hand and wanted to wipe the blood off Dog Egg's head. Although she quickly regained her senses, it was this action that made the villagers who watched the excitement understand that the blood on Zhao Gudun's head was fake, it was chicken blood soaked by Li Tsui Tsui, who was a mother. Is she really not afraid to scare Zhao Gudun's soul away? The onlookers started pointing at Li Tsui Tsui and laughing, one by one. Li Tsui Tsui's face darkened, and she decided to smash the jar and say, so what if I accidentally bumped into this blood while killing chickens? Su Xiaohu did indeed hit my dog's egg, and the children in the village can testify. Su Shui exclaimed, isn't it normal for children to bump and bump around? What's normal? It was Su Xiaohu's fault for hitting someone. Auntie Li, are you still secretly pinching our heirloom as an adult? Are you going to have a prison sentence? Come on. End of this chapter.